Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, continuing our biochemistry playlist. In the last video, we talked about competitive inhibitors and their effect on Michaelis Menten plot, as well as the Lynn Weaver Burke plot. Today, we'll turn our attention to the non competitive inhibitors, which bind the allosteric site of the enzyme rather than the active site. Metacosis analogy for competitive inhibitors was Cody the capitalist. For non competitive, just think of Nancy the Karen. Please watch the videos in my biochemistry playlist in order, especially video 11 and 12. We have four types of enzyme inhibitors. Competitive inhibitors, please refer to the last video. Non-competitive inhibitors is today's story. Later, we'll talk about mixed and uncompetitive inhibitors. So please pay attention because non-competitive is not the same as uncompetitive. I know it's confusing. What do enzymes do? They increase the rate of the reaction. They decrease the activation energy. They do not change the equilibrium position. They do not change the thermodynamics. And they do not change the overall free energy of the reaction. Each enzyme has an active site and an allosteric site, or as I like to call it, the front door versus the back door. The front door, active because it has the catalytic activity, but allosteric does not have catalytic activity. By the way, what does the word allo mean? It means different, stereochemically different from the active site, i.e. back door versus front door. The front door is for initiators, the back door is for regulators. If you have a restaurant, the customers should come from the front door. The government regulators and public health officials should delve into the back door. Here is the normal enzyme function before the reaction and after the reaction. The competitive or non-competitive inhibitors will cause zero effect. Some students think that inhibitors will cause the opposite effect. No, not true. Inhibitors will give you nothing, zero effect. The competitive inhibitor, think of Cody the capitalist. For the non-competitive inhibitor, think of Nancy the Karen. The competitive inhibitor will bind to the front door. The non-competitive inhibitor will bind to the back door. Please recall from Michaelis Menten that the substrate concentration and the rate of the reaction are directly proportional until you hit Vmax. When I increase the number of enzymes available, Vmax goes up. When I decrease the number of enzymes available, Vmax goes down. When the affinity between substrate and enzyme goes up, Km goes down. When affinity goes down, Km goes up. If you want to know why, please watch the previous videos. Non-competitive inhibitors will bind to the allosteric site, the back door, for regulators, not initiators. When Nancy the Karen binds to the allosteric site, the substrate will be unable to bind to the enzyme. The substrate would love to bind to the enzyme, but it can't, because Nancy acted on the allosteric site to block the enzyme from binding to the substrate. But the substrate would love to bind the enzyme. I would love to bind, just like the good old days. So the affinity did not change, which means that Km will remain constant. If you recall the previous video, competitive inhibitors could be overcome. It was reversible. You could kick Cody, the capitalist, the competitive, out of the active site by adding more substrate. So the question is, for a non-competitive inhibitor, can I kick it away just by adding more substrates? The answer is no. No one can kick Nancy the Karen away. That's why the Vmax will go down. Recall from the last video, competitive inhibitor occupied the active site. It prevented the substrate from binding to the enzyme. The affinity went down, Km went up, there was no change in the Vmax because you could overcome it. It was reversible. But today, with Nancy the Karen, who occupies the allosteric site, the substrate would love to bind to the enzyme still. So there is no change in affinity and no change in Km. Can you overcome Karen? No, it's irreversible. That's why Vmax goes down. The analogy from the last video. Imagine here is a shop a which sells cars and it sells 10 cars to 10 customers every day when cody the capitalist sets up shop in front of shop a it will take about half of the customers from shop a less customers are attracted to shop a compared to before 
the affinity, the attraction goes down and KM goes up. But, Cody, the capitalist did not change the net sales revenue or the numbers of units sold. VMAX will stay the same. Now, with Nancy the Karen, the non-competitive inhibitors, well, Nancy will not set up shop because Karens cannot produce anything. She will come, stand in front of the shop, and will start yelling at customers. And will threaten shop A to call the police, i.e. the regulators, allosteric site. Now, the business is ruined. Instead of 10 customers per day, only three loyal customers came. So what happened to the VMAX, please? It went down. But if you ask these three loyal customers, do you still love the shop? They said, absolutely. We are still in love with it. It did not change the KM. Karen did not change our attraction to the shop. Moreover, Karen did not prevent us from going to other shops. Do you remember Michaela's Menton? Yeah, substrate concentration on the x-axis and the rate of the reaction on the y-axis. Please look at the non-competitive inhibitor. It decreased the number of enzymes available to bind the substrate and therefore VMAX went down. Let's clean it up and just add the non-competitive inhibitor. What happened to the VMAX, please? Well, it went from here, which is this point, to here, which is this point. As I go from here to here, it means that the VMAX decreased. But did you shift the curve to the right or to the left? No, the S did not change, i.e. the KM did not change, because the affinity did not change. We're done with Michaelis Menton. Let's do Linweaver Burke plot. Look at that. This point is not Vmax, it's one over Vmax. If you want Vmax to go down, as with Nancy the Karen, this point will go up because it's the opposite. So let's clean this up. You see this? The point went from here to here. It goes up on the graph because Vmax is going down. So the gray line is the original one. The pink line is after adding Nancy the Karen. Vmax decreased because the numbers of enzymes available to bind decreased. Unlike with competitive antagonists where both graphs met at the y-axis, today both graphs meet at the x-axis. You can imagine Nancy the Karen threatening to slit your throat horizontally. Look at this gesture, horizontally. That's why both graphs will meet on the horizontal axis. Horrible analogies, I'm sorry, but will help you remember. Okay, can you draw a non-competitive inhibitor on this michaelis menten graph? Easy. I want my VMAX to go down, which means I have to draw something below the control. Okay, do you want to change KM? No, therefore intersect with that original line. Do not shift right or left, just on that line. Beautiful. Can you draw a non-competitive inhibitor on that linweaver burke plot? Easy. Both will meet on the horizontal axis. Here, do you want VMAX to go up or down? I want VMAX to go down, which means one over VMAX to go up here. And you draw the butamus graph like this. The affinity did not change, the KM remains constant, but the VMAX went down. Here is a better mnemonic. Imagine that you were driving down the road, minding your own business. However, your grave sin was driving just above the speed limit. So Nancy the Karen showed up out of nowhere and started yelling at you. She said, quote, I'm gonna call the police on you. What do you think is gonna happen to the speed of your car after you hear this? You will slow down and your VMAX will go down. However, you still love your car. The affinity between you, the enzyme, and your old Ford Model T piece of vintage, the substrate, remains constant. There is no change in KM. By the way, you can download these doozy notes from my website. Quiz time! Which of the following graphs A, B, X, or Y represents a non-competitive inhibitor? Let me know the answer in the comment section. There are more graphs in my general pharmacology course on my website. I also have a toxicology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com plus many other premium courses. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.